Uh, hey everyone, Blaine here, and today I'm going to be showing you uh, how to use SkyVector, which is a flight planning website, uh, as well as uh, the Navigraph uh, charts uh, desktop application as well to plan your uh, your full flight. Now, um, I'll get into Navigraph in just a few moments, uh, but if you if you don't have Navigraph or you don't know what SkyVector is, that's okay. These are kind of fundamental steps you're going to take in flight planning, and uh, it's important to uh, to flight plan uh, correctly because if you don't um, it can make uh, challenges when you're actually in the aircraft such as your uh, away point isn't correctly uh, entered or it doesn't exist or things like that um, and you want to make sure that you have the correct information because while you can pause you know whatever simulator you're using um, in the real world you you can't pause <laughs> so it's very important to make sure you have the correct information so we're gonna start with uh, sky vector this is a free aeronautical charts uh, and flight planning website you just simply go to skyvector.com and uh, what we'll do is we'll start by uh, making a, an initial flight plan that we're going to then use in Navigraph, and I'll speak to that in just a little bit. So um, it may be set on the website to a different parameter at the top here. Uh, however, you're going to want to make sure that world low is selected, okay? because that's what we're going to use for our flight planning. And then to begin, you want to select flight plan in the top left-hand corner, and a drop-down will appear. So today I'm going to be planning a flight from Salt Lake City to Las Vegas. So we enter our departure uh, and you would start with the uh, the airport uh, code which will be KSLC Salt Lake City and you'll hit tab and then you'll enter your destination which is going to be Las Vegas KLAS and you'll hit tab. Now you can see right here this is this is kind of the the flight point if you will it's it's a straight line and although a straight line is you know, fundamentally it's correct, that's, that's, that's the distance between the two, you actually have to create waypoints. And how you're going to do that, uh, or how you should do that, is by using VORs. Now, VORs on Sky Vector are anything that are a circle with a bunch of uh, ticks going around the side, much like a clock would. And you want to use VORs because those are um, important points to use in your waypoint and your flight planning. So, what you do is you can drag this line here uh, between your two airports and you can select uh, a specific VOR. So, uh, the first one you want to select is right here. And then a, a menu will pop up and you'll be prompted to ask, you know, which waypoint do you want to use? Now, WEVIC is actually going to be part of our SID, which I will explain in just a bit. So we're going to use that one there, and you would hit plan. You would then continue uh, making your flight point, or your flight plan, sorry, using the waypoint. Now, how do I know that these are the right waypoints? Well, if you think about it, um, I'm traveling southwest because I'm in Salt Lake, which is more northern and more eastern than Las Vegas, which is more south and west. So I want my waypoints to be heading in the direction of southwest. If I were to make um, a waypoint, you know, all the way over here, I, I mean, I, I could do that, but it really kind of adds unnecessary distance to the flight plan, which is something you don't, you don't want to do. So you would continue to kind of follow your initial kind of direction, which is southwest. So, as you can see now, we have kind of our general flight plan mapped out, and uh, we have uh, the waypoints that we would use here. Now, if you were using something like the Cessna, um, you would probably go ahead and just enter those waypoints into uh, the GPS computer, but because I'm going to be doing uh, this flight plan, or it's going to be for a 737, uh, it's, it's not really, the waypoints there aren't immediately necessary, they're going to be uh, kind of just a ballpark idea of the direction I'm heading, uh, which I'll be doing uh, in the FMC, which will do the majority of the flight plan for me. But, what's going to make the difference is when I get into Navigraph and I discuss SIDs and STARS. SID is Standard Instrument Departure, and STAR is Standard Arrival. Okay? So, with that, let's get to Navigraph. Now, Navigraph is a uh, it's supplemental uh, product uh, from a third party that you can purchase to use, and if you, um, if you plan to really get into flight simulation, um, whether it's just for fun or because you're, you know, you're training to become a, uh, a pilot in the real world, I strongly recommend it because it provides 
current information, it provides charts, it provides planning, it really makes the process seamless. And it's really important to have accurate information um, when you're doing this kind of thing. And, you know, you have to pay for it. A lot of people don't like that, uh, that you have to pay for a lot of this supplemental stuff, but it's actually really affordable. So if you go to products on Navigraph's website, it will go there and it, you'll want to use uh, Navigraph FM, SMS data. And this shows data that you can download for the cycles. It's really important to use. But you want to go purchase subscription here and you want to select your country and it will tell you what uh, products are available to you. You'd want to select ultimate which is the data that you can put into whatever flight simulator you're using and it provides charts. Now it's as you can see here it's eight dollars and thirty cents euro a month. Uh, I've done the actual conversions uh, today which is November 16th 2017. Uh, that's twelve dollars and fifty cents Canadian and that's nine dollars and seventy five cents American. So very very affordable. Um, I strongly recommend you get it. Um, and then what one of the other things it does is for charts it allows you to have an application you can download called Charts Desktop. And this is really going to come in handy for uh, planning your uh, your flights. So with that I'm going to go into Navigraph now. So this is what the, uh, the, the program looks like and because we're starting uh, at uh, Salt Lake City that's where we want to begin. So we're going to go to Salt Lake City, we're starting to type in KSLC, and it's going to come up, and we're going to select it. Now, the first thing we want to do is we want to think about um, what runway do we want to depart from. So, in order to find that, you would go to Taxi, and you would select Airport, and this will give you a layout of the airport. Now, because Las Vegas is southwest of us, we're going to want to head pretty much due south initially. So we have our choice of runways 16 right and 16 left. Um, 16 left is is a little bit more uh, directly south when we're heading off that way. So I'm just going to use that one. So you'd want to write that down. The next thing you want to do is you want to select your SID, which is your standard instrument de instrument departure. Now. Um, the important thing to remember about SIDS is that they're only applicable to the departure airport. You don't need them for anything else. Additionally, you want to select a SID that allows for your directional departure. So because I'm heading south initially, I want to select a SID that will give me um, as close to south as possible. And I'll go through some of these to show you uh, what that essentially means. So if we select the first one, Edith 5, we can see that in order to use this SID, we'd have to exit north, or take off north, and then we'd have to make a left turn, and then head back down south. Now, you could use this one, but because you have to go north and then actually turn, it's a little bit more extra work. So that one's not the best one to use. So if we skip to the next one, you see here, this one here does allow for us to go south, but the flight plan is more specifically suited to the due west. So that one's not as applicable. Here, you're heading south, but you're doing a hard turn, and you're going east. So that one, absolutely, we don't want to use. And then I'm going to skip to the one that I've actually already selected, because I've done this flight several times, uh, to really show you the point here. So WEVIC 6 is the one that we'd want to use, because we're heading due south, and that's what we want. Another thing to now note is what's known as a transition. A transition is the uh, the point in the flight where it will basically transition you uh, to a further point in the flight plan and that's important to note. So because we're pretty much heading south and then initially to the west uh, we want to select WEVIC 6 for the SID and then Bryce Canyon for the transition so you want to write those down. Now we've concluded what we need to do at the departure airport so now we want to go to our arrival airport so we're going to type in KLAS which is Las Vegas and we're going to do the same process again but basically from the arrival airport so we want to go to taxi and we want to look at the airport uh, which um, which uh, runway do we want to select? Well, we're going to be coming in from the south, uh, I'm sorry, I apologize, we're heading southwest, uh, so it's probably best to use uh, runway 26 right here. The reason for that is because directionally it's going to be the best runway for us, and it's also longer than 26 left. It's always better to have more available runway if you can, just because it's better to have. Uh, so we're going to use that one, so we'd write that down, and then what we do is we'd select our star, which is our standard arrival. 
So I'm going to do the same thing again, which one is the best one for us. So if we go to the first one here, we can see that the arrival here is specifically for people coming, or if you're flying, specifically for going northeast. We're coming from the completely opposite direction, so we don't want that one. Same thing here, completely opposite direction. And this one here, this is if you're heading, uh, like from the Seattle area, you're heading uh, from the northwest, uh, not coming from there. So that's generally how this works. I'm going to select the one that we should be using, which is Luxar 2. The reason is two things specifically. One, because it is heading uh, directionally the way we want, which is uh, to the southwest, and it also shows that the Bryce Canyon transition is located on this map. And because we're going to be using that transition anyway, it naturally makes the flight plan more complete. So that's the one we want to use. Uh, some other things to note is that, um, as you can see the flight plan here, each of these capital, uh, these capital things here, I apologize, are your waypoints. And Bama, as you can see right here, is going to be kind of like your last waypoint before you begin your, your approach phase of the flight. So, with that in mind, we've written down what our SID is, it's WebEx 6, standard instrument uh, departure, what our STAR is, Luxar 2, our standard arrival, what's our transition, it's Bryce Canyon, uh, what our departure runway is going to be, 16 left from Salt Lake City, our uh, arrival runway, which is 26 right, which is going to be uh, on the uh, eastern side of the airport, which is what we want. Our last waypoint, which is Bama. Now, you don't have to really um, do anything with the last waypoint. It's just kind of good to keep in the back of your mind so that you know, um, you know where it's going to be in the flight. And then what you want to do for the last thing is you want to look up your initial and final approach fix so that you just kind of know whereabouts you're going to be in the approach phase. So to do that, you would simply hit approach on Navigraph and you'd select your runway. So we selected 26 right. So we can see here that flies is going to be our initial approach fix. And the initial approach fix is to basically say, okay, this is the waypoint where you should be, you're going to be beginning your approach to the airport so you know that you're on course. And then Condi will be your final approach fix, which is the last waypoint before you actually land. So that's essentially how you use Navigraph and Skyvector. Um, what you have to do with this data next is you have to input it into the FMC or the flight management computer. And I'll make a video uh, in the next little while showing you how to do that. Now, it's important to note, Every flight plan is always going to be different. There's always going to be changes. Um, you may load the flight plan in and discover that there's a waypoint that shouldn't be there, so you'll have to edit that out. All of that's done in the FMC. But before you ever get into the aircraft, you want to have your flight plan, or at least your route, understood so you know where you're going and how you're going to get there. And a really good way to do that is through Skyvector and Navigraph. Uh, if, you don't, if you're not sold on Navigraph, and you want to get into Flight Sim, I really urge you to get it. Like I said, it's just over $10 a month. Absolutely worth it. Okay? I hope this helps you uh, in your instruction, and uh, hopefully you can get in the wind soon. Thanks for watching.